Hey guys, I am Dusha and I am here bringing you some more campaign. And today we're gonna start on Theros, right? Because yeah, I finished Innistrad. Huh. Turned on some subtitles, lowered the volume a little bit. Should help out. Hydra attack! Alright, let's do it. Let's chop off some heads of a Hydra. Sounds good to me. Sounds like a fun way to spend an evening, right? As you move through the thick forest, inscrutable hissing comes from every direction. Suddenly, a monstrous creature lunges at you. Its many heads strike out, hungry for your flesh. I really want to know who wrote those dialogues, because that sounds like a fun job. Alright, let's see what we got here. We got a raise the alarm, we got a seismic strike with two mountains and an assault griffin. Yeah, I can dig it. I mean, pretty decent removal spell, instant speed. It's a lot better when you're playing a mono red deck, but it's not terrible here. I took out the Foundry Street Denizens, I think, so that means that I'm actually going to have a little bit of trouble um, getting too much value out of these seismic strikes, and I'm probably going to be ended up killing either three or two mana spells with it, even though it costs three mana itself. But the thing is, it does scale a little bit to the late game, and I might be able to hit a five mana thing at some point in the late game. Alright, so we got a couple of options here. Um, I think I'm just going to go with this lone missionary, maybe? Maybe the Krakos Command? Yeah, we'll go with this lone missionary. I think it's a little bit better to play Raise the Alarm here instead of Krakos Command if I was going to play one of the, these two spells, but um, I guess I'm going to go through the cards. This guy just gained, he's a 2 1 for 2, he gains me 4 life when he enters. Um, this thing gives me two red goblins, this thing gives me two soldiers at instant speed, um, and then this thing is a 3-2 flyer. So the reason why I say it's better is because I want to get my white creatures out on the battlefield as soon as possible so I can, um, uh, I can use the, I can get the flyer into play a little bit sooner and those guys tap for white mana with, um, that ability called Convoke. So... I actually think I'm just going to go ahead and kill this thing this turn. So I'm going to play this mountain. It's very important that I play the mountain here. And I'm not going to let him untap in case he's got a 2 mana pump spell or whatever. If he has a giant growth, he's still going to be able to get me. But I don't want him to untap with that thing. I could technically wait because he only gains um, power when he had sacrificed another creature. So he could um, I could kill it in response to playing another creature. But... There's a Primordial Hydra. That's an issue here. I do have a billion chump blockers, but does this thing get trample? Yeah, it does get trample. So, um, yeah, that is going to quickly become an issue. Alright, let's drop this Assault Griffin. It's too bad I didn't still have that Seismic Striker. I could have killed it, but not really, because if I had um, attempted to kill it, then my opponent would have just eaten it with his other thing, so maybe he would have attacked first. I don't know. There's couple ways to get around it but yeah this is gonna be a pretty big issue not really sure how I'm supposed to win this one all right you got it friend buddy bucko doubling season Ugh, that's a lot of damage next turn active treason I guess that's how I'm supposed to win this one so let's see next turn he is going to put 12 counters on this, so I need to at least have one thing back to block. Alright, so let's drop a Krankos command. And we'll play Raise the Alarm too. Uh, I think that thing only works for him. Sometimes these these effects um, work for anyone, and it's pretty cool when those happen, because then I would have been able to get four tokens there. But yeah, I need to block this thing with one creature, I believe. And I'm going to be able to act the treason and get an 18-18 for myself here. Um, but let's see. Do I want to just throw more than one thing? Do I want to throw like four things under the bus? It's probably not going to be playing pump spells. I don't know. Could be a mistake. Or not. I could go down to one life. Another doubling season. Oh, that's cute. That was a timely act of treason draw. I mean, it would have been better if I had drawn it this turn, and I would have been just like, I have no idea how I'm ever going to win this game, blah, 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 blah. 
But yeah, let's do this. Let's see, I had three, four, five, six, seven, eight power on board. So I was actually reasonably close to killing him without the act of treason. But that worked. Can't really complain about that. Some destruction of evil Hydra. Ooh, a booster pack. I'll take it. What do we got in here? Alright, demolished, not very good. Poor no Oh shoot. I didn't see it. I right, got a two headed Cerberus. He's good if I'm playing all those those auras, but um Let's just do this next one instead of going and check what we got in that pack. Ah, I meant to scroll over oh shucks. Anyway, with a dreadful bellow, a mob of brutal minotaurs charges. They really did not want to go all out. The other one had like a whole backstory, and this is just like mm, minotaurs are charging. Mm, get over it. All right, this is a good hand. Got myself a nice little kiln fiend action. Tended knight to follow it up. I've got some active treason, so I could take a blocker, attack with it, pump this guy. It'll represent a lot of damage straight to my opponent's face, which should be pretty good. I like drawing the angelic edict. One thing though that is interesting to note is that a 2-2 two, two first strike and a 1-1 one, one, does not match up well against most minotaurs because minotaurs usually are 2-3s so that could be an issue in the near future. This is going to be a death bell raider here. I know, fell hide brawler. That's much better for me. This guy can't block unless he controls another minotaur so I can just get on in there and then he won't be able to attack because I'm going to have my attendant knight and he's going to have first strike. But him not being able to attack is, yeah, no, it's not so bad, because I can take his other Minotaur with Active Treason. But I'm probably not going to be playing after Active Treason until the last turn of the game, because it's an it's a really interesting phenomenon. I'm going to go a little bit in depth here. I know sometimes I explain really simple things, and then sometimes I try to explain more complicated things. But, ooh, Rage Blood Shaman. That's dangerous. I guess he can attack now. Alright, you got it. So, okay, so the act of treason thing. So normally what you want to do in Magic the Gathering, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna talk for a little while. Normally what you want to do in Magic the Gathering is gain card advantage. So use your one card to get rid of two of their cards, or you use your one card to gain two cards. And by doing that you're gonna end up with more cards at the end of the game and then you can kill your opponent that way by either getting more creatures, killing all their creatures and having one or two left over, any any number of ways you can do that. Using a card like Axe of Treason doesn't provide you with any card advantage. All you're doing is taking one of their creatures and attacking. So you're dealing damage to their face and you're getting your you're sort of killing them, but unless you're actually just uh, reducing their life total to zero, then you've accomplished nearly nothing with Axe of Treason. The way that you gain card advantage with this is if you can actually kill them that turn, then it does something ridiculous because the turn you kill them, you steal one of their blockers and you gain an attacker that is haste. So essentially what you're doing for a turn is you're killing a creature and you're getting a haste creature for three mana, which is an absurd deal. The thing is, it doesn't last until the end of the turn. But if the game ends that turn, then you've basically cast one of the best games in one of the best cards in the history of Magic. So I don't know if that made any sense, but uh, I think that the play here is actually just to hold back and um, and play this Griffin. I'm going to be able to use Angelic Edict next turn, so hopefully I'll be able to take something out. Um, it's not worth using Axe of Treason just yet. I could have gotten in for six, seven, eight, nine damage, but my opponent's at 19, so then it doesn't really do anything. Alright, you got it, my friend. So if he attacks with his, with, with the, okay, he's not going to attack with the Rage Blood. Not too surprising there, but. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and drop an Angelic Edict here. Kill one of these Rage Blood Shamans, get some power here and then um, attack my opponent for seven. So this will actually put me in a position where if my opponent does attack next turn with his Rage Blood Shaman then I'll, likely I'll be able to just act of treason and win the game. But we'll see We'll see what ends up happening because if my opponent doesn't play anything that means that they've got a removal spell of sorts. 
right, this is a Kragmore caller, so um, we'll see what happens here. But that that thing's probably gonna attack me this turn. All right, everything's coming in, um, and this is gonna be for what? A lot of damage. So it's gonna be 10, 14 damage. So I have to chump block something. Um, but I think I can actually kill my opponent next turn. So this will actually hit for four. Right? Because this is only your... Oh, it gives him trample too. Am I just dead? No, I'm not just dead. I can actually throw this thing in front of it. So um, this is going to be 10, 14. And I'm going to have four, seven, eight, exactly 12. Right. Perfect. Planned out just gotta oh wait does this give oh it gives my other minotaur creature so I can actually just um jump block this one right what isn't the chicken foot trample why does it have trample it shouldn't have trample all right well since it the, since it's got the chicken foot I'm gonna go ahead and block there then I'm gonna take 10 12 go down to one um, or I'm just going to take 10. We'll see if it's just a, a visual glitch or just an in-game glitch. It's just an in-game glitch, right? So this thing gives other minotaurs plus one, plus one, and trample. This thing just gives them haste and plus attack. This thing doesn't give anything. The other Rage Blood Shaman's exiled, so not really sure um, what ended up happening there. But I am really sure that I'm going to be able to win this game. If I did my math correctly. Um, let's hope I did. Because <laughs> otherwise I definitely lose. 4, 8, 10... Uh, 4, 8, 11, 12. Perfect! Okay. <laughs> that was close. And I'm really glad that I, I did take so long to look at that. Because I actually would have just lost the game on the spot there. Um, let's open a booster. And for realsies this time. I'm not going to... Going to fast forward another Nihilus Disciple. Ooh, a Bolt of Kyranos. I like to see that. Um, a lot of these cards are not in my color. Divine Verdict is a pretty good removal spell. God's Willing is a good way to protect my creatures. Target creature you control gains protection. You scry one. This thing is just going to destroy attacking or blocking creature, which is nice. Another Ordeal, which isn't ideal. Ha! <laughs> and then a Johnny's Pride Mate, which is, uh, which is alright. So... I actually do want to go to the deck manager. I know I just didn't click on the deck manager, but you know you can't always click correctly. All right, let's uh, sure. You can tweet. That's I hate that they that they uh, they worked on tweeting for you. You can tweet your notifications, but they couldn't figure out how to get all the, uh, the mechanics down. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's edit this deck. All right, I think I want to toss. Ooh, I got a hero of Iroas. This guy is kind of sweet. I'm gonna toss this this thing in there. This thing, this thing. I guess we're doing our deals. And then Snarecaster is also not a bad thing. You can enter the battlefield. You can tap a target creature. For those of you who don't know what ordeals do, I don't even think I've ever showed this card. But yeah, um, it's all right. Anytime you can get that many counters on your creature for that small of an amount of mana that's pretty nice what is happening I don't want cloud shift in my deck I just want it <sighs> all right let's let's do this and let's just see red and white cards for now all right thank you so burning inquiry we don't like rock slide elemental we like right Whenever another creature dies, you can put a counter on him. He's got first strike. You don't need many creatures to die for that guy to start doing some work. Um, let's toss this Bolt of Kyranos back in this deck. Alright, so where are we at these days? Um, Siege Dragon is kind of expensive. I'm not a huge fan of it in this kind of deck. I'm definitely going to drop this Charm Breaker Devils. It doesn't really do much for me in terms of helping me win games. Seismic Strike. Uh, Blood Craze Neonate. I'm not crazy about it. Ha <laughs> ha. Hilarious. Um, I do like these these convoke spells in here. With all the little little chumps that I've got. It's 
see, we still have 66, so we need to make a bunch of cuts. Alright, I mean, these dark steel axes are not really doing much. They're, they were just kind of filler. Hall of Triumph probably isn't good enough until I focus in on a specific color, which I do plan on doing eventually. I don't really want the Siege Dragon either in my deck, it's just a little bit too expensive for me. Um, let's see, what kind of bad cards do we have? I mean, Lone Missionary is not great, but then again, neither is the other thing. Uh, Bushwhacker. Alright, let's, uh, let's drop these Act of Treasons, even though I think that they're pretty good just in this format. Maybe I'll just drop Pitchburn Devils. I don't really need this card. It doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't do anything particular. I think Act of Treason is just going to be pretty good in this particular format where my opponents are um, using specific strategies. So basically what I did is I just cut off a lot of the top of my curve and the reason is because this deck is an aggressive deck. I don't really expect to get that far and that late into these games. So if I can just cut off my curve, then I won't end up drawing those cards in the late game that I don't need. The Mulfolk Planeswalker Kiora seeks the biggest monsters of the multiverse of sea. She's found some lovely specimens on Theros. Won't you take a look? Sure. Let's see what you uh, manage to rustle up. All right. So five lands is probably a little bit too many in this kind of deck. So I'm going to draw a new one. No planes, but I've got a couple of goblins. Or I got a bushwhacker and a kiln fiend. Alright, it's not great. But hopefully, hopefully I'll draw planes. In fact, this is actually pretty bad. But if I'm on the draw, it's actually not so terrible. So, I definitely don't want to play this guy in turn 1. It's just a 1-1 one, one for 1 if I do that. I can play him a lot later and he'll represent a lot more damage. So, yeah, I'm going to hold on to Mr. Bushwhacker for now. Senior Bushwhacker. Bushy the Whack Whack. Alright, what you got here for your two drops on? Oh, just a, a crack and a hatchling. That's alright with me. Although, I think the longer these games go on, the more difficult it's going to become for me to win. Because, as I was just saying, my deck is, is focused on the early game. So, yeah. It's not looking too good for me. Those first two draws did not help one bit. Act of Treason, again, is a card that I only want on the last turn of the game. And sometimes it's the best card in the deck, but only on the last turn of the game. You got yourself a Cultivate, my friend. Um, and I drew a white spell. I need to draw a Plains for that to be useful. Um, I can play Bushwhacker here, but it doesn't do anything, so I'm just going to actually pass the turn. That's one thing that I think some players don't really see is just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. And this is a perfect example of it because both of these spells um, have very little utility now, but a lot more later. Water Servant is brutal. This thing is so powerful. Ugh. Gross. Looks like we might be picking up our first loss this one. I could have definitely mulliganed this hand, but... I don't know. What does that even do? It's a 4-4. Four, four. Number of islands you control. Well, I guess it can't attack, so that's the good news, right? Alright, I can dig it. You got yourself a 4 damage attack there, my friend. Ugh, the worst. Drawing only mountains. I might actually have too many mountains in this deck. I actually haven't checked. Ugh, I just want to concede and restart. Cause there's no way I win this one. Well, there's a way. If I draw planes here, then I can angelic edict this. If my opponent doesn't add anything big to the board here, then that was so risky. I could have had a shock for that. No, I guess yeah. No, that was that was terrible. Okay. Let's do this. Now it actually does make some sense to play Bushwhacker. Hmm. The reason being, um, if I start chump blocking with it, then this guy starts growing. And this thing isn't likely to win me the game anytime soon. But I don't really want to chump block because... Okay, you got it. Um, because... Seraph of the Masses is one of the ways that I actually have a chance to win this game, so. Alright, we just need to draw planes right here, and actually, this is not really one that we're going to lose. 
right away. So that was a very good draw. And not only that, but unfortunately it exiles it, so Rock Slide Elemental won't trigger. It only triggers when a creature is destroyed, and that is a very specific difference in magic, exiling and destroying. So I really hope that my opponent doesn't trade here. I can't really imagine them doing so. Um, yeah, I'm probably just going to get killed by like Stormtide Leviathan or something like that at some point. But, you know, I mean, you just got to play it out for as long as possible. Oh, actually, I can just kill this thing with Active Treason. That was perhaps a mistake. But then again, it doesn't really do anything, so... Alright, uh, what do we got here? An awkward amount of mana. Let's see. Kinda wanna gain some life, but I also wanna spend my mana efficiently. Um, and I also wanna play white creatures so that I can play this thing next turn. So yeah, I'm just gonna drop this lone missionary here. Gaining the the four life to get me out of range from this thing is pretty relevant, and that's the main reason why I'm doing it. Um, and yeah, actually, I think I am just since I have the extra mana, I'll just action trees in this thing. If you don't understand what's going on right here, um, I'm gonna steal his creature, and since its power and toughness, yeah, sure. Since its power and toughness are equal to the number of islands he I control, its controller controls. When I have zero islands, he just straight up dies. So, yeah, that's that's the uh, the short version of what what just happened there. There's a longer version, but I don't think you're really interested. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to mention it. All right. So next turn, I should be able to cast the Seraph of the Masses, and it'll be a four-four flyer, which could be pretty nice. Spreading seas. See, I mean, this is exactly why I do these things. I fi oh no, it just turns it into an island. So there goes my planes. Right? What's this enchanting? That's so sad. Oh no, I didn't. Pl I don't have another white creature, so that sucks. All right. Well, I guess I could play bushwhacker here. Well, I guess I kind of want to wait until this thing's a little bit faster. Well, it gives all my creatures haste, right? Yeah. Let's do that. Sounds like a good plan. I can get some damage in here. Gives my marauding maulhorn haste. Downpour. Blech. Alright, well, that's something that's gonna happen. Um, there's no point in attacking at this point because my opponent can just block both my creatures with Kraken Hatchlings. So, there's that. That's 8 mana. That could be a big number for some Kraken decks. And there's seven mana for a Simic Sky Swallower, so that's going to be a 6-6 flyer. So I really want to draw planes here, because then I can actually cast the Seraph of the Masses. Otherwise, I can cast a big old nothing. And this thing has to attack. Well, if that thing has to attack, then I may as well actually attack with everything else. Because this thing's just going to get eaten up by the 6-6. If not, I'm very happy. So, okay, I guess that makes some sense. The Rock Slide Elemental's dead, yo. Um, but this is a little bit dangerous on my opponent's part. Well, let's see what you got, sir. So yeah, if I draw that land, then I can actually play this Seraph of the Masses or this Assault Griffin, or both. Perhaps, perhaps both. We'll see. Shock. Um... I don't think that does it, especially with a downpour. Yeah, it was a little bit unfortunate. Um, all right, let's attack, and then players die show. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit unfortunate there. Not really much I could have done. Just draw. Maybe I could have mulligan the hand, but I think it was a fine keep, especially on the. Uh, Especially on the draw on the play. Oh yeah, we wanted to go continue so that we can go to the deck manager and see if we need to adjust our mounds or plans because I don't even think I've ever I've ever even looked at it. 